Chapter 13 is an overview of how we classify organisms uh, and also kind of discusses all the different forms that life on Earth can take. Scientists organize life on Earth into groups. There are eight different groups that any organism can fall under. The biggest or broadest group is the domain. There are only three domains uh, that contain all the life on Earth within them. The smallest or most selective group is the species. There are many, many different species. Uh, when we talk about the scientific name of an organism, the scientific name is the genus species name. For example, the scientific name for a house cat is Felis catus. Felis is the genus name, and catus is the species name. Some organisms also have subspecies, which would be one level lower than species. The three domains of life are domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. Domain bacteria and domain archaea are both composed of prokaryotic organisms. Prokaryotic organisms do not have a membrane-bound nucleus or organelles. Uh, bacteria you should be familiar with. They're very tiny organisms that can be harmful or helpful uh, to both plants and animals. Archaea are odd creatures that are similar to bacteria but live in extreme conditions, such as high heat like in a volcano, uh, or high salt areas that would kill any other life form besides archaea. Domain eukarya is the domain that contains all the eukaryotes, so all the organisms whose cells do have a membrane-bound nucleus and they have organelles within the cell. There are four kingdoms within domain eukarya. Kingdom animalia are all the animals, which would be the creatures that are motile for at least part of their life and cannot make their own food. And this would include the insects, the birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, etc. Kingdom plantae are the plants, and those organisms are able to make their own food through photosynthesis and are typically stationary for most of their life. Kingdom fun contains all the yeast, molds, and other fungal organisms that reproduce through spores and cannot make their own food. These organisms often digest dead plants and animals as their food source. Kingdom protista is made up of a, a wide variety of organisms that are usually single-celled, uh, and this includes algae and protozoa like giardia, which can cause severe diarrhea if you have large amounts of it in your gut, uh, among other organisms. Within the kingdom animalia, there are many different phyla. The most well-described ones are listed here and in your textbook. Most of the phyla are invertebrates, which would be organisms that don't have a backbone or a spine. Phylum chordata is made up of the chordates, which would be organisms that do have a spinal cord, and it's encased within a bony backbone or spine. You should be able to match the phylum names with the descriptions or an example from that phylum, and you should know which phyla fall under which kingdom. Phylum porifera um, is actually the simplest form of animal and there is some debate over whether or not these should be considered animals or they should be considered plants because they don't move around. Um, in this phylum, uh, all of the creatures are fixed to an underwater surface and they filter bacteria from the water that's drawn through their very loosely organized body cavity. Um, so these would be the sponges would be in this phylum. Phylum Nidaria um, contains all of the radially symmetrical um, creatures that have tentacles. Uh, some of them are going to be fixed to surfaces, like sea anemones, and then some are free-moving, uh, like jellyfish in the marine environment. Phylum Platyhelminthes would be the flatworms. These can be free-living, um, such as the marine flatworm that's on the left-hand side, or they can be parasitic, like the tapeworm that's found on the lower right-hand side. Phylum mollusca um, are soft-bodied animals that are often protected by a hard shell. Their body plan consists of a single muscular foot and a body cavity that's enclosed in a fleshy mantle. So this would be the squids, the clams, um, the snails, um, anything that's kind of got a soft body and then a hard shell around it. Phylum Annelida uh, are the segmented worms, and these are interesting because their body is divided into a set of repeated segments, 
and each of the segments has the same organs in it uh, for the most part, so they're kind of interesting creatures to dissect. Phylum Nematoda are the round worms. Uh, they tend to be cylindrical in shape, almost like uh, spaghetti. There are some free-living ones, but the most common ones are the parasitic ones. So when you see round worms in puppies or kittens, that's in this phylum. That's the phylum nematoda. And so you can see in the picture kind of the size as compared to a quarter um, of a parasitic round worm. Phylum arthropoda or arthropoda is uh, all of the animals that have segments that have become specialized into different roles. Um, so the segments can turn into legs, into mouth parts, into antennae. Uh, the body is completely enclosed in an external skeleton, and that skeleton will molt uh, as the animal grows. So this would be the insects, the spiders, the ticks, uh, and then also lobsters and crabs. Phylum echinodermata are the prickly animals. So they're very slow moving, or sometimes they're immobile. Uh, they don't have any segmentation, but they do have radial symmetry. Uh, their internal skeleton has projections, so they have a spiny or armored surface. And then the last phylum that you need to know is phylum chordata. These are all of the animals that actually do have a spinal cord or a spinal cord-like structure. This would be all of the large land animals, um, fish, sharks, aquatic mammals, salamanders, household pets, you can see my pets here in, in the pictures, uh, you would be considered in this phylum. So this is all of the, the vertebrates, all the animals that have a spinal cord. Within Kingdom Plantae, there are four phyla you should know. Phylum Bryophyta contains the mosses, Phylum Pteridophyta contains the ferns, and Phylum Coniferophyta contains the cone-bearing plants like pine cone tree. Uh, the last phylum, phylum uh, Anthophyta, contains the flowering plants, and these plants produce seeds within fruits. Within Kingdom Fungi, there are three phyla you should know. Phylum Zygomycota contains the bread molds and is identified through the production of a structure called a zygospore that allows sexual reproduction to occur. Phylum Ascomycota contains the fungi that produce spores in the sacs on the tips of their hyphae. And phylum basidiomycota contains the fungi that produce spores through specialized club-shaped appendages on the tips of the hyphae. Kingdom Protista contains, uh, as I said, a wide variety of organisms, and we can roughly classify them into ones that resemble animals, ones that resemble fungi, and ones that resemble plants. Some of these organisms are pathogenic, or they can cause diseases. Um, as I mentioned before, Giardia can cause severe diarrhea. In, in pets, Giardia is often an undiagnosed condition or an undiagnosed cause for waxing and waning loose stools with occasional vomiting. Diatomes are the primary component of diatomaceous earth, which is a type of soil that's used as a filtering agent for pools or for insecticide purposes. Viruses are in a class all by themselves because they aren't really considered to be living things. They have to use a host cell to replicate, and in the process they destroy that host cell. Viruses are made up of either DNA or RNA, and they're surrounded by a protein shell that's called a capsid. 